Najee Harris has become a rising star at the running back position for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now I'm sure you're all a little familiar with his background. He was once homeless, he's in the NFL now, now he's all smiles, right? However, the story of Najee's rise to the NFL is much, much darker than any of us could have imagined. You're gonna wanna grab some tissues for this one because nobody's ever told Najee's story like I'm about to right now. This one's dark. The, the research for this one made me tear up multiple times, you guys. So sit back, relax, maybe grab a drink, and enjoy the rise of Najee Harris. Najee Harris was born on March 8, 1998 in the small town Martinez, California to his father Kurt Harris and his mother Tiana Hicks. And unfortunately, his time in the womb was the only stable home he had up until his freshman year of high school. Growing up, Najee had bounced all around town between Seattle and mostly the Bay Area. Him and his family, including his four sisters, lived in Oakland, San Francisco, El Sobrante, Pinole, Hercules, Vallejo. He even lived in GRIP, which is the Greater Richmond Interfaith Program, a homeless shelter in Richmond, California. He lived at GRIP for a few years, as long as the shelter would allow him and his family to, until they could find something else. He said he's lived everywhere, literally everywhere around the bay. Now, I want you to soak in what I'm saying here. Think about how many places you've lived at before you started high school. One, two, maybe, maybe three places tops. Najee Harris, before the age of 14, 15, had lived in at least seven different locations. Imagine what that does to a kid his age. New schools, having to make new friends every year or two. Najee was going through it. Dr. Rebecca Levine Coley is a professor of counseling, developmental, and educational psychology, and Dr. Melissa Cole is a senior researcher whose aim is to address family and youth homelessness. These two doctors put together a research brief of a study and discussed the effects moving locations has on young children. They noted that moves in elementary school, kindergarten, impeded on social, emotional, and cognitive function. However, they mentioned something in the brief that felt super relevant to Najee's situation. Coley and Cole mentioned that frequent moving takes a toll on children's social emotional well-being, with each additional move being associated with emotional and behavioral problems, as well as small declines in social skills. Now, I'm not calling this a negative, but I have a feeling this is one notable reason Najee is such a unique personality in press conferences nowadays. It wasn't a big... Yeah, man, also, oh, it was one of them bigger than Jerome Bettis. Jerome Bettis, no, it's not. God damn it, exactly. <laughs> Shout out Jerome, though, because that's the homie, but god damn. Y'all man, y'all making it seem like I'm just fat as hell. <laughs> Whatever, though, you know. Y'all, 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 y'all get under my skin, I ain't gonna lie. That's what, that's what I like, y'all. You know, not, not too many people can get under my skin. Y'all, y'all have a... <laughs> the key finding in this study was that residential moves during early and middle childhood have long-term effects on social emotional outcomes, which suggests living stability is incredibly important in early life. With Najee having to move so frequently, it's not a long shot to say that his living situations put him through some real trauma growing up. He had mentioned in an NFL Films interview that he'd never lived in the same spot for more than two years and his family struggled to find stability. Najee and his family faced multiple evictions growing up and they were forced to live in different hotels multiple times and they even had to spend some time living out of a van just to have some kind of shelter to sleep. I always try to be kind, man. You got no idea what someone's going through. Finally, he and his family found some kind of stability, having to settle down in one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in Antioch, California, where he went to high school. Now, while Najee and his family may have found a more stable living situation, his life would only continue to get darker from there. Najee had a very troubled past, but to him, that was just normal. The shit he saw was normal. Robberies around town was normal people getting unalived right behind his home, all normal to him. This was all he knew. He had no frame of reference to know that this is not healthy. Najee says he had a lot of anger and frustration growing up. He had a lot of negative energy pent up inside of him, and he got into a lot of trouble growing up, often getting into fights as a method of releasing that negative energy. And we all know that's a very unhealthy way of managing and releasing said energy. Najee's parents, fortunately and luckily, recognized this early on and decided, we're gonna put you in the sports. 
obviously, yeah, A, they wanted to keep him out of trouble. That's why they put him into sports. But more importantly, B, he needed an avenue to channel all that energy that's just built up inside of him. They needed a healthier method of dealing with that. And sports was perfect. His parents and coaches always talk about how Najee would be on the school's practice field late at night just to train and channel that energy to keep himself out of trouble. His high school coach John Lucido recalled the story about how he would drive past his field at 10 o'clock at night and he'd see a shadow running up and down the field. He'd pull up, turns on the lights, and oh, it's just Najee putting in work. The coaches would open up the room for Najee to work on his craft and they let him stay there all day long because he didn't like being out in the neighborhood. He would study his favorite running backs like Adrian Peterson, Barry Sanders, and implement what they did well into his workouts. Funny story, Najee was cool with the janitor so he got them to turn on the field lights for him just to train at night. And once again, this was just him turning all his negativity and frustration into something positive and very productive. He needed a getaway from everything that was going on in his life and football was his getaway. Now that's all fine and dandy. The only problem was the trip Najee had to take from his home to the football field. His trainer Marcus Malu told the story about how Najee would walk to school on a route called the zone. He would walk through the middle of a war zone to get to that football field in the middle of the night. People lost their lives here, including one of his close friends, Donovan. There was a lot of violence going on in Najee's neighborhood specifically, but surprisingly, nobody touched him. One day when Najee was walking, this big honcho who ran the streets pulled up on him. You Najee Harris? Uh, yeah. Just gonna let you know, nobody's gonna touch you. Najee pretty much just got a hall pass for the streets. But why is that? Well, the hood knew Najee was special. They knew his athletic ability gave him a chance to get out of the hood, so they looked after him. Najee's work paid off, and he put together a legendary career at Antioch High School. His freshman year, the principal thought Najee would be a fine addition to their freshman football team. The freshman football coach at Antioch gave Najee one look and said, no, he's gonna kill my freshman, he's playing JV. And thus, Najee Harris's freshman high school career, already over. In his first high school football game and his first JV game, his principal showed up at halftime to find Najee sitting on the bench with his helmet off. Principal walks over to the JV coach. Hey, I came to see the new kid play. What's he doing on the bench? Coach tells the principal, Mr. Rocha, the score is 28 zip. Najee got the ball four times and scored all four times. Najee Harris showed right away that he was that dude. After just a couple games as a freshman playing junior varsity, he was quickly bumped up to varsity. And I'm gonna say that again because I have never seen something like this. Najee Harris, in his freshman year of high school, made the varsity football team. I didn't even know that was possible. I, I didn't know that was allowed. I, I don't know, that, that's sick, that's awesome. Never heard that story before. And it's all a testament to the work Najee Harris puts in. He played five games for varsity his freshman year. And in one of those games, he played against Joe Mixon, who was ranked as a five-star running back. And Najee actually outshined Mixon. Nodge took 11 carries for 92 yards and a touchdown, while Mixon only took 15 carries for 59 yards. Antioch still lost that game, but Joe Mixon came up to the 9th grade Najee to tell him, you're the real deal, bro. A kind of passing of the torch, if you will. Najee showed promise his freshman year, and Antioch was set at running back for the next three seasons. Life was getting a bit better for Najee. Things were looking up for him, but unfortunately after his freshman year, he was faced with another very difficult obstacle that would change his life forever. If you notice throughout this video, I hardly mentioned Najee's father, Kurt. You would think a father would play a huge role for a family getting through so much hardship. In reality, Kurt Harris was in and out of the family picture for about 20 years. And after Najee's freshman year of high school, Kurt left the family and went back to Seattle. Now there are articles detailing how Kurt was an abusive and neglecting father, and I'm sure there's a little bit of truth to that, but Najee also made it clear that he felt Kurt was a good father who did his best. That being said, the family still lost their father figure, so Najee Harris, a 15 year old Najee, had to step up and carry as much of the burden that he could that his father left behind. His head coach John Lucido revealed that Najee was pretty kept to himself his freshman year, and it wasn't until his sophomore year that he opened up and the coaches started to learn what he's been going through, and his food insecurity was something very notable and concerning to them. Lucido would often ask Najee, you hungry bro? And Najee was just too humble, nah, I'm not really hungry, even though he didn't know when his next meal was gonna be. 
He'd always decline because he didn't like the sympathy, but the coach could see right through him. Yeah, man, you're lying. Coach Lushido wanted to take care of Naji. He would often get Panda Express with him, and Naji would often stay at Lushido's house, and he'd often bring that food back home to take care of his family. Could you imagine being 16 years old in high school, feeling the obligation and weight on your shoulders to have to feed your family? Man, that's not a weight that a 16 year old should have to carry, man. That's a lot of weight. But Naji carried it, and he carried it willingly. The coaches took care of Naji because they knew he was putting in and will put in the work to take care of them. Fortunately, Naji didn't have to carry all the weight that his father left behind. Growing up, his uncle Jamal helped out Naji's family when they had nothing. And he really stepped up as a father figure when Kurt left the family. In fact, Naji called Uncle Jamal the closest thing he's had to a father. In addition, he met and became close with his trainer Marcus Malu, who Naji worked with since his freshman year. Marcus stepped up as a big brother to Naji and did a great job taking care of him. He even got him his first phone and helped him out when he needed a bite to eat. Naji Harris was living a life of crisis and this no doubt took a toll on his mental health. Fortunately, Naji had one of the most important things anybody could have in a time of crisis. He had an incredible support system. According to the Highland Springs Clinic, mental health can be a tough battle. Oftentimes it can take hold of your life and make you feel unworthy of social interactions or being cared for by others. Tell me that doesn't line up with what Naji was going through. He didn't open up to his coaches until his sophomore year of high school. He didn't feel worthy of sympathy from others. He was living a life of crisis. I deeply appreciate people like Marcus, his uncle Jamal, his former coach Mori Susu, John Lushido, all the other Antioch coaches. They created one incredible support system for a kid who was going through some really tough shit. These guys took care of Naji. They would take him out to eat. Shoot, they would even take him to the store to fill up his cart with groceries just so his family could have enough food to eat. The Highland Springs Clinic also mentions how isolation can force your brain to work against you, offering a confirmation bias of your worst insecurities which can lead to anxiety, depression among many other conditions, which is why support systems are necessary. Naji may not have had a great childhood, but he had an elite support system that helped set him up for the best future possible. Naji Harris turned himself into the number one running back in the nation. And he had Nick Saban, Jim Harbaugh, and Brian Kelly with athletic scholarships ready for Najee to join one of their athletic programs. The only problem was Najee's algebra grades were too low and he couldn't qualify for all the big universities recruiting him. Meet Brandy Thompson, an Antioch math teacher who the football coaches wanted to tutor some of their players, especially Najee. In fact, the coaches even moved football practices to later in the evening so Thompson could tutor Najee after school. That's how important this was to the coaches. Thompson wasn't really aware of who Naji was athletically, but she learned quickly of his celebrity status, getting constant phone calls, getting paged. It was reporters wanting interviews with Naji, but she praised Naji for staying focused on their work. Naji became a family member to Miss Thompson. With Thompson's help, Naji passed Algebra 2 and satisfied his college academic requirements. Because of all her help, Naji requested that she accompany him at the football team's senior night where players take the field with family and a faculty member of their choice. She's just another example of the great network of people Naji was able to build, and she became another part of that support system that Naji needed throughout high school. Naji had offers to play for teams like Alabama, Michigan, UCLA, among many other competent teams. Ultimately, Naji committed to Alabama because he knew that he was the number one back in the nation and he'd get to practice against the number one everything else in the nation at Alabama. He knew iron sharpened iron and he wanted that challenge. Naji had an awesome college career, putting up 4,624 total yards and 57 total touchdowns in four years, including one national championship in two appearances. However, Naji really broke out in his junior and senior seasons, putting up over 1,500 total yards each year, becoming a Heisman finalist in his senior year. Now, while Naji did some awesome things on the field at Alabama, the most awesome thing he did there was off the field. So stay tuned for the end of the video to see what that story is. After having an electric senior year at Bama, Najee was bound for the NFL. He believed that he might go to the Cardinals, Dolphins, but he most strongly believed that come draft day, he was going to be a Pittsburgh Steeler. Draft day was approaching and he received an invitation to attend the 2021 NFL Draft in Cleveland. 
and he declined. In lieu of attending the big flashy NFL event, guess where Najee chose to spend draft day? He hosted a draft party at Grip, the homeless shelter that took care of him and his family when he was younger. He treated everyone to food and drinks there. Everyone at that homeless shelter loves Najee because when he went to Alabama, he always circled back home. He always knew to give back to his community. This was a true full circle moment for the 23 year old running back. Draft day arrives and with the 24th overall pick, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Najee Harris. Everything he worked so hard for in life, his mission to pull his family out of poverty, everything was coming true for the young running back. Nonetheless, Najee still kept himself grounded. About a month after he was drafted, he established the Bigger Picture Foundation, which focuses on assisting underserved families in reaching their potential and goals. The foundation focuses on education, homelessness, addressing hunger, and using sports as a platform to develop life skills. Najee quickly became a day one starter for the Steelers, and he never let that go putting up over 1,200 total yards and 10 total touchdowns in each of his first two years in the league. Najee Harris is a playmaker for the Pittsburgh Steelers, putting together a real breakout year in 2022. No matter how awesome Najee is though, he always credits his success to the Steelers O-line. The stat sheet doesn't look like it, but you know, we all, all of us running backs uh, you know, tell the difference of, of how much they're improving and you know, to come out here and for them to, to do how good they do, you know, I feel like this whole press conference should be more just about them, you know, other than me, because they did an amazing job. And I told him that every time that um, we got on the sideline, he came in the game, how good they were doing. So, as a matter of fact, Najee received one of the greatest honors a Pittsburgh Steeler could. With Ben Roethlisberger retired and Cam Hayward soon to be the same, head coach Mike Tomlin made it a project to pass that torch of leadership to Najee Harris. He was the one selected to carry on what it means to be a Pittsburgh Steeler. Coach T says Najee. He is a born leader, and I don't think any of us disagree. Najee Harris is a key piece of this young Steelers offense, and it's almost obvious that Najee is going to be a Pittsburgh Steeler for a long time. Now to wrap up this video, let's rewind back to Najee's time at Alabama. Najee and his family moved to Bama in 2017 so they could help him adjust to the Southern life. And before he was drafted, he asked his mom Tiana, where do you want to live, mom? She said she wanted to move back to the Bay to be able to care for her first grandchild but she needed to get her finances in order first. And Najee just smiles to give back to the woman who raised him, the woman who in toughest times displayed strength to Najee and his family, the woman who was always there for him. Najee took the money from a Nike endorsement deal and a Fanatics merchandise contract and got his mother a fully furnished apartment overlooking a park outside Sacramento. Tiana says, I can remember waking up one morning thanking God for not having to worry about how the rent was going to be paid. Najee may be a force of nature on the football field, but his emotional strength, he no doubt got from his mother. Najee Harris had a very dark childhood, one that not many people bounce back from. But with the help of his incredible support system and his own sheer will, he survived his past. And he's too humble to admit this, but to me and millions of others, Najee Harris has made it and his will to keep moving forward is incredibly moving and incredibly motivating. He's gone from surviving homelessness and food insecurity to a star NFL running back. The story of Najee Harris is one for the ages. You guys, I wanna thank you for watching my Najee Harris life story video essay. I think we all agree his, his childhood was a lot darker than I think we've ever heard before. But I hope I told you a compelling story, a moving story. I hope you enjoyed it. it means a lot, man. This, this research was emotionally difficult. I'll tell you that much. I appreciate you for watching. And I also want to shout out Peggy Fluent, who became a Here We Go Show Diamond Club member. Remember, you can support the Here We Go Show on Patreon or become a YouTube member for as little as a dollar a month. Those are the best ways to help support this channel. You can go to patreon.com forward slash Devin Engel, preferably. Let me know your favorite Najee Harris story. Let me know who you want to see me do next, which video essay you want to see me do next. This is my favorite thing in the world. Someday, I want to move to Pittsburgh. I love you. I appreciate you. I'm Devin Engel. I'm the Steelers Storyteller. Hope you have a good one. Here we go.